Yeah, no, I've talked to quite a few uh, lifelong Southeast residents who had no idea we had bats here, much less, uh, you know, seven different species. By the time it's, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, everybody's had their full day in, in the sun and they're back inside and that's when the bats come out. Well, I went to Fish Creek Pond uh, one night in the spring and I knew there were bats there and I looked, you know, walked all around the pond and I couldn't really see them. And then I used a pair of night vision binoculars and there were several dozen bats, you know, flying across the pond, but they're just, they're so dark, they're so small, they're so fast and the lighting is so, you know, bad. Um, at that time of night, especially when we've got cloudy, rainy, rainy days that they're really hard to see. I figured we had years or possibly even a decade or more before it arrived in, in Alaska. Maybe we'd be the last, you know, refuge for, for bats. And of course, in uh, March of 2016, there was a white-nosed positive bat that was found dead in Washington state. And that kind of threw everything into uh, confusion and really, uh, it was, it was a bad day for, for Western bat biologists. The white nose is a fungal disease that uh, attacks bats while they're hibernating. So it invades the, the tissues of their uh, wings and muzzle. That's what gives it the, the, the name white nose. White nose has decimated uh, populations of some species back east. You know, back east, bats, uh, hibernating bats tend to hibernate in caves and mines. And out west, they're definitely doing something different. That was one of the, the main uh, focuses of our early uh, research was to try to figure out where our bats are hibernating, what they're doing in the wintertime if they're not going to caves and mines. What we were finding when they made these moves was that they were ending up on these really steep forested scree slopes. It's basically a big jumble of rock and so they're just crawling in between the cracks and crevices in these rocks and overwintering there. The bats are definitely um, roosting in smaller groups uh, than they are back east, and so there's hope that they'll, it'll be a lot harder for the disease to spread. It is really crucial to try to collect as much baseline data as we possibly can so that we can learn what our bat populations are like here in Alaska um, in the event that white nose does make it up here. Bats are nocturnal animals and they navigate primarily through echolocation. The bat calls will actually show up as, or you'll hear them as being kind of repetitive clicking sounds, oftentimes fairly quick. Um, some of them, depending on the species, some of them are a little slower and a little more musical and melodic. You know, we're stationed here in Juneau, so we can't keep going to Petersburg and Wrangell and Sitka and Haines to, to do these surveys. So we have no way, literally no way of getting the data without the help of, of citizen scientists in those communities. Bats are, bats are so important, they're so understudied um, to be able to directly contribute to that, especially when there are so many unanswered questions has been really, really rewarding because we learn something new every time we get a little bit more data. To be able to see them up close and to handle them up close has just really uh, been a pleasure. They look like little flying puppy dogs. They're so cute. They're a little intimidating, you know, they've got those sharp little teeth, and, um, but I've just found them, they're so fascinating.